Okay, I would like to take a moment to tell you about, or actually 10 minutes to tell you about the integral in work, how the integral fits into work. Now, what if um, the force that's doing the work on an object, um, we're going to assume it's over a straight line path. Um, what if that changes depending on uh, how far you move? Well, the area underneath this graph is the, is the work done. But that area is not so easy to find because it's not a, re a rectangle or a triangle or a trapezoid. It's a curved, it's a curved um, area, and so you have, to, you have to figure out how to get that. Well, this is what you do when you're taking an integral. This is basically what you're doing. You take that and you segment it into a bunch of rectangles. Since we know how to find the area of a rectangle, we just break it into a bunch of rectangles. The rectangles have... Um, a thickness of, we'll say, delta x. Each one of these is delta x, so that's delta x. This is delta x. They're all delta x. But the heights are different. But that's okay, because we know how the height depends on x. See, it's equal to f equals 3x squared. And so that's how the height depends on x. And so um, if I want to approximate the area... The area is approximately, I'll put a wavy line for approximately, um, just um, F1 times delta X. That would be this height right here times delta X. So that's the area of that rectangle. Plus F2 times delta X. That would be the area of this rectangle. Plus F3 times delta x plus f4 times delta x plus f5 times delta x. Well, that can be tedious to write. And so what we do is we have a shortcut method of saying the area is equal to the, the sum from the first rectangle, n equals 1, to the fifth rectangle, n equals 5, of f sub n times delta x. So that's how you would write that if you wanted to shorthand it. Now, as you see, that doesn't really get you the area because you're going to um, overestimate it because see all these right here? That's, that's not really under the curve. But if I, instead of having five rectangles, if I had ten fit in that space, I would get a little closer to the area. Of course, if we had a hundred, it'd even be closer. And if we had a trillion, it'd even be even closer. In fact, <clears throat> there's nothing stopping us, once you know a little bit of calculus, there's nothing stopping us from putting an infinite amount of boxes in. When you do that, that gives you not an approximation but it's exactly right. So area is equal to, and I'm going to say the limit as delta x goes to zero um, of the sum from n equals 1 to n equals infinity of fn times delta x. What I've just done is I've put in a, a, an infinite amount of these. Of course, when delta x goes to zero, we're talking about a, a width that is very, very, very tiny. Now, that's kind of long to write as well. So what I'm going to say is that it's the area is work. I'm going to call that work from now on. The work is equal to... And the way you can shorthand this is you can say it's the integral of f dx. And so that's just the another way of writing that. It means the exact same thing. dx right here, this is the width of the rectangles. And this right here is the height of the rectangles. So we have a uh, width times a height, 
And we know there's an infinite amount of them because um, dx, whenever you see a, um, dx, you can assume that that means a, an infinitesimally small width or a, an infinitesimally small distance. Okay, so what do we do with that, though? Well, I can put in the equation now. Apparently, the work the work is the area, and that's equal to f, but f is is 3x squared. So that's that gives you the height of any rectangle. You just put in whatever wherever you're at on the curve, put in a value for x, and that will give you the height, and this is the width. Now when you take this integral, you're really taking the antiderivative of the of the height, not the width. Okay, this is called the integrand, this is called the differential. And you only take the the antiderivative of the integrand. So let's go ahead and take it then. So that's gonna be x cubed. And I'm I'm thinking there's a three over three. And um, I need a, a plus C as well. And so now this will tell you how much work is done for every given, for any given um, amount that you move the box. We've just figured out how to figure out the work done uh, for a varying force. It turns out that a lot of times this C will be zero. It depends on your initial conditions. Okay, that is how we're going to handle and how I want you to interpret the integral when you see that in, in class. All right, thanks.